stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. This is a new month. Come on, y'all. Second day of June, the sixth month of the year. Let's get excited. I know we've, I know we've had a hard day. This is not a Wednesday night crowd. Last Wednesday, I was here. God came and showed up on me and showed out on me. I don't know about you, but good evening, body of Christ. Good evening, Chicago Glory Powerhouse. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're not getting excited, pull the Lord said, fight. You fight on. Are you ready to fight? Are you just going to stand around and just let, just let everything just hit you inside your head? Are you ready to fight? This is a new month. We got to get established with God covenant. His grace and mercy and peace have kept you for five months. Holy Spirit, we pray today that we just thank you, Lord, that we can establish you and your strength. The anointing that you have placed over this house, let it rain on ourselves. Let it rain on us. Let it be like the latter rain of a rainy day. Let the clouds of joy come into your life today. Lord, we thank you for this day. This is another opportunity, Lord, for us to get it right with you. The sun has came at the morning. It has rose during the noonday. And now it's getting ready to settle in the evening. And Lord, for that, we say thank you, God. Thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus. As I said last week, the only sign we throw up here is the sign of the cross. He took it right there. So if you haven't established covenant with that, you're out of order. If you have not got it right, get down on your hands and knees or stand where you at. As I told you last week, pull over your car and say, Lord, I thank you because I'm getting myself together. I'm going to establish myself with you. I pray that this month will be a month of establishing, a month of career opportunities where lacking insufficiency is going to show up and show out. But God is going to do miraculous things on jobs. He's going to do miraculous things in families opportunities and getting everything established with him and making sure that your career is right, making sure your family is right. So get, let's get ready. Father oh, Christ, this is, it's no time to waste. We got to get ourselves together. Our pastor's been saying, get your get, get, your get right, get right. You got to be getting it right because this is the month of establishing covenant with God, watching your careers take off, watching you excel. Let's ascend to a higher level, a higher level we've never been before. Because I know I'm ready to take wings like an eagle. I'm ready to soar over this place and I'm ready to give what I've been given to. No more notes taken. Now it's time to give the word. It's time to be the walking word that we are supposed to be. We are to smile. Smile. Just look around smile at someone and watch how their eyes light up. Smile. Just a simple smile. Just a simple hello, how are you? Let's get it right. Let's get it right, church. We are Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. And this has been a place for me. And when we do everything, we do everything to excellency. When we excel, we all excel together. So we're going to get established this month. It's in June, right? Am I right? Am I right? I know. Hold on. I'm like, Pastor, we can't, I can't be in Chicago because I know we get louder than that. Am I, are we going to get established with Christ Jesus and our, that God of all might of our tonight? All right. Let's do it then. Lord, I pray that the... Lord, I pray that you just watch over us tonight, Lord. That you let your, let your word come. Touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our body and our soul. Touch that wounded vessel, Lord, that needs that help. Touch that troubled mind, Lord, that's troubling right now, Lord, that's been going through all that verse. That suppression, depression, be annihilated in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, bring us peace to all understanding. Lord, I pray right now that we are standing here in faith. We're just going to say, Lord, we thank you. We give you the pleasure. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. In your precious Son, Jesus' Son's name. Amen. 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 Let's continue to give God worship. Amen. Take some time and worship personally with the Lord. sing an old song a little different. It says, we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb that was slain. Say, we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb.
say we have to we have overcome by the blood the blood. So 
Thank God for mercy. Come on, thank God for mercy. Let us pray. Father God, we honor you tonight. And God, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for covenantal opportunity to be blessed by you, to be strengthened by you, to be empowered by you, to be changed by you. God, bless us, bless us, bless us, and keep us, God. God, I pray for your people right now, God, that you give them listening ears, understanding hearts, eyes that perceive in the spirit. Give them minds that receive. I thank you for it right now. God, I thank you for the word that you've given tonight. I thank you for the tongue of the learned that I can speak a word to those who are weary in this season. I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Abbreviated declaration of faith. The word of God is what I stand upon. My faith is ever growing. You may be seated. If you turn in your Bibles, and I closed out, I reiterated something on uh, Sunday asking you to read in Psalms 18, I believe it was. I ask you to read verses 44 through 50 for our purposes. But tonight, I want us to read Psalms 18. And we're going to start at verse 32. And we're going to go all the way to verse 50. We're going to read it in its entirety. Go ahead, Brother Lee. It is God that girdeth me with strength uh -huh. and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. And setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war. So that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. And thy right hand hath holden me up. And thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me. That my feet did not slip. I have perceived, pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. 
For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued me under those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind, I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away, and be afraid out of their closed places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be thy rock, my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me, and subdueth the people under me. He delivered me from mine enemies, yet thou lifteth me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man, Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathens, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. The Bible says, and to his seed forevermore. As those that have been engrafted into these covenantal blessings that were given to David, we must learn how to not just be, be readers of the word. You see, the word is a living, viable force. And the word is not just something that we're supposed to peruse, something that we're supposed to just look at, you know, when trouble comes, you grab a book and you look in it. No, 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 no. Thy word have I understand what the word of God is and the power that's in the word of God, then we're able to move toward the things of God. We cannot be those people who relent, who, who just who uh, give up every time something comes at them. I, I need you to understand something. David wrote this because he had an enemy. We're not reading it for casual reading. But you, God told you, and you had many days that you could have read it, and you would have been empowered up to this day. But it's for the whole week. Somebody say the whole week. And so as, as you're listening to what God is saying tonight, and I want you to listen with the spirit man. I don't need your natural man to hear, because the natural man is going to reject what's going to be said tonight. Because then if God saw you, he saw you, he saw you, he saw you, he saw you and he put me to shine a light on that which he saw. Nobody's feeling should get hurt, but someone's feeling probably will be hurt. Is that all right? They never stand tall. Be right. I've been teaching getting your get right right. And tonight I just want to drop a few strategies for getting your get right right that when God shows us how we can get our get right right we won't have any problem moving you know you read in the Bible and you saw where he said he'll restore years that the canker worm and the palm worm come on y'all know what I'm talking about am I right but he said I'll restore that he said but you don't understand that when a canker worm or a palm worm got a hold to something there was nothing left and God has said even though there was nothing left I'm going to bring back everything that has been devoured by a locust or a devouring spirit and many of your lives have been touched by devouring spirits 
and things have been eaten up from you. And you don't know what to do because you've been serving God and you've been serving God faithfully, but, but it seems as though in your servitude, you tend to lose more than you gain. But you have to have a mind like David. David said it was good for me <laughs> that I had been afflicted. <laughs> he said, for through that affliction, I learned your statutes or your commandment. I learned how to behave myself through affliction. And sometimes we get in a position with God that God is saying, I'm letting you get there so you can take his yoke upon you and learn of him. In other words, he's telling you that, look, your situation is not supposed to be your teacher. Your teacher is still supposed to be the Holy Spirit. He's your lead. He's your guide. And what he's telling you is, I want you to counterbalance whatever is coming up against you, whatever is afflicting you, I want you to come up against it. I want you to counterbalance it. Let me move on. I don't want to take much time. I, I, I'm going to need about 16 minutes. Is that all right? Do y'all have 16 minutes that the Lord can bless you with? Are you sure? Huh? Tell your neighbor, God gave me a mouth. It was meant to bless him. God gave me a mind. It was meant to think about it. God allowed me to have motives because I was supposed to serve him. I was supposed to be motivated, my goodness, to serve God or him. And with my mouth and with my mind and with my motives, I ought to be serving God. You can you gotta quit serving your situation. And you have to tell God, Lord, I thank you. Because you've made too many negative deposits in your mind. And any time you go to the negative in any account, you're going to have to make a deposit uh, to resolve that out-of-balance condition. Am I right? I need you to smile at somebody right now because y'all looking kind of strange right now. And I haven't even gotten to the horse up and tell them your mind is out of balance. Your, your, your mind is out of balance and that's why you can't get your get right right because your mind is out of balance because you're leaning into your circumstance and not depending upon your God. You've taken your hope out of the picture. But my Bible told me hope thou in God. God is my hope. God is my hope. Not only is he my hope, he's my present help. He, he is my helper. Tell your neighbor, God is our helper. God allows us to get to a season of transition. He allows us to get to uncertainty. But it's a reason that he lets us get there because he's checking our faithfulness. How faithful can you be when everything is against you? How faithful can you be when sickness is ravaging your body? How faithful can you be, my goodness, when everything is hitting up against you and it looked like God is not even looking your way. But I come to tell somebody tonight that the Lord said, I never took my eyes off of you. And I always told you, even if you don't see me, I see you. Because God is everywhere at all times and at all times. He's everywhere. But he said, we have to do something. We have to fear. And I, I don't have time to teach fear because I got to get to this hard stuff that y'all not ready for. But, but, but he said, you got to have that reverent respect. You got to respect what he's saying so you can enter into rest. Because if you don't, you're going to hear the gospel preach. But you're not going to be able to mix the word with faith. And if you can't mix the word with faith, you'll never enter into rest. God wants you to rest. Even God, as powerful as he is, rest. I say, God wants you to rest. Jennifer, you got to rest. Tell them again, you must rest. What does that mean? That means that you have to give your mind a calm down period. You have to give your mind a period of time when you're not worrying about anything. Because you know what? Your worrying didn't change the situation. You called it meditation. You were not meditating on that. Because when you meditate on something, according to God, you put his word on top of the situation. And when the word covers something, or the blood of Jesus covers something, or the cross comes upon something, 
victory is assured that God's going to show up, my goodness, in the situation. See, the problem is that the enemy knows that he can put a little pressure on people that are small-minded and they'll stop praying. They won't continue to trust God. They don't want God in the picture. But prayer connects us to God. Prayer is our connection to God. Me and all I don't have a church yet. Me and all always to pray and, and, and not fight. He said, even though you're going through something and it looked like you should have pulled all your strength, he said, you should have still found yourself praying at the end of the day. But God said, look, he wants us to do something. He wants us to be faithful. Somebody said, be faithful. Because God said, look, when you're faithful, my goodness, when you're faithful to him, you will show a measure of diligence. Mm, mm. It's hard to be diligent when you're broken. See, he hasn't even got to the hard stuff yet. The Lord told me to explain to you what Peter wrote. He said, think it not strange concerning this final trial, which is the trial you <laughs> as though some strange thing happened unto you he said don't you think it's strange in other words Jacob, that's ordinary oh you 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 see it, our mental attitudes when we understand that something is going to come whether or not we want it to or not after a while when we make mental preparation for it it does not overwhelm us oh y'all hear me but he said rejoice that we are partakers of Christ's suffering. He said, you got to go through something. Nobody's going to put a crown of thorns on your head. Nobody's going to beat you on your back with a whip. Nobody's going to do that. But he said, I will let life put a pressure on you. That'll make you think you're going to die. And he want to see where you still press toward your personal gold gospel. Will you still press toward everything that's going to cause you to lose that which you value. See, if you have to lose relationships when you follow God, uh, y'all don't like that. Y'all still talking about here, all my friends still my friend. That's the problem right there. You have not been converted yet. Same. Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as But I prayed for you. That your what? That your what? Does what? Fail not. And when you are, see, people come to church, but they don't allow themselves to be converted. And if you're not converted, your container can't hold the power of God. And God does not waste anything. He checks you. He does not mind you being marred. He does not mind you being scarred. But he said, if I see a mar, if I see a scar, I'm going to put you back on the potter's wheel. And I'm going to repair that thing. Because I got some oil, my goodness, of my Holy Spirit that I want to deposit on the inside of you. But how do we get our get right? right? How do we get it right? We have to eat. And, 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 and for our lesson tonight, we have to eat God's word. You know, Elijah, he was on the run. He laid his head down. Angel brought him some cake. Woke him up again. He told him, look, rise and eat because this journey is too great for you. And see, Christians try to keep going without eating the word. I don't care how many sermons you listen to. I don't care about that. Did you eat it? Did you eat it? The, qu the question is not how many sermons you purchased. It's not what you got in the cupboard. Did you? Because the journey is great, isn't it?
told us that we're to maintain a perpetuity of hope, and, and yet we tend not to want to do that. Can I start teaching you now? My, my, my time bought up, and, and I, I had to jackhammer for a minute because it seemed like y'all wasn't ready to hear from God yet. But tell you, God got a plan for us tonight. He's going to change somebody's mind. But we're all going to have to examine ourselves. Ecclesiastes 11 and 4 tells us that though there were a people who were condition oriented and they wouldn't sow because the conditions were not favorable. And then they even would mess around and lose a harvest, my goodness, because they were looking at conditions. And saints, that would happen to us a lot. We can't get our get right right because we're too busy looking at the conditions that we're in. So what we're going to have to do is understand what God is telling us in this season and in this time. How many of you know God would like you to do something that's hard? I don't have that church yet. God will ask you to do something that's hard. He will ask you to do something that's seemingly impossible to you. That's why he makes you learn how to depend on his Holy Spirit who's resident on the... So I told you I was going to give you some strategies for getting your get right right. The first strategy is sow and reap. Sow and reap, period. Don't, don't just sow. You got to also know your season to reap. Don't be one of those Christians who use a lot of psychobabble trying to authenticate that God has given you. No, 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 no. Let your harvest speak for itself. God wants your, your fruit to speak. Tell you, God has blessed all of us with fruits. The reason that most people can't see their fruits, hey, dude, you're about to go there now, it is that they stop sowing and reaping. And they were not like the Macedonian church. That was in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. The Bible tells us that the Macedonian church, in deep poverty, my goodness, still gave. They still blessed the house of the Lord. God is not moved by you telling, telling him you don't have this and you don't have that. God has already gave us an instance in the Bible that he said the Macedonian church gave when they didn't have and Shekinah Glory Powerhouse, I come to tell you tonight that God said he's not looking at that. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at your attitude. Are y'all hearing me? 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 and 2 said, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How then in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep, deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Here's the problem with condition saints. They give based on condition instead of the word. Can I teach you? Can I teach you? The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall read what? Also bountifully. Tell you, that's all left up to you. It ain't, you can't pray for it. You can't fast for it. Are oh, you hearing me? You have to set your mind that if I give a little with the measure, come on now, according to Luke, the sixth chapter, with the measure that I meet, it's going to be measured by two. So here's where we're going, and I, I had to do all that work. To get to this part. Because God is trying to get grace to us. And here's the hard part. Somebody said the hard part. Oh, say it loud. Say, Pastor, they about to get on the hard part now. Y'all, don't, don't turn me off now. Don't turn me off. Y'all y'all stay where you at online. Stay where you at. You about to hit you though. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You have to change your attitude when it comes to God. I'm going to ask a question. You're going to try to answer it right away. I'm here to tell you right now, don't you answer that question right away. You ask the Holy Spirit to help you to answer that question 
And it may take a couple of days before he gives you the true answer. The second strategy is this. Do not be stingy towards God. <laughs> so what's the question? Am I stingy towards God? I know what you're going to say right away. I return the tithe. I give offering. Do you give a proper offering? Based upon what God has done for you, is your offering really acceptable? Or is your offering conditioned to what you're used to giving? I'm not teaching well now. So I said, I, I knew that y'all were going to faint on that because soon as I mentioned money, people faint. But that's the very thing they're looking for. They go to work looking for money. Come on, they work hard looking for money. They understand they can't pay their bills without money. Yet God has given us biblical principles on how to obtain money. But one of the things he said, you can't be sparingly giving and expect him to abundantly bless you. Stingy. Somebody said stingy. For this teaching, I defined it myself. I, I, I didn't use wealth. I defined stingy as an unwillingness to release money, assets, even time and talent <laughs> based upon a selfish, unfounded reasoning that the measure you give would cause you harm, loss, grief, or discomfort if you released it. You're going to be able to teach people, right? So, you know, you know, in other words, stingy people ignore the situation or need or plight, and they allow selfishness to serve as a compass for their souls. They're reluctant to part with money. They're reluctant to sacrifice time and talent. Stingy people practice repressing. They take their pleasure over their conscience. Mm -hmm. You got a long pass they they painting on you. you. You see, stinginess has called many to have a false sense of empowerment. But more than anything, a stingy person ignores that the blessed hand of God gave them what they had. Actually, they want you stingy to war God. Stingy people operate in fear and selfishness. They are selfish. And they operate in fear. So they become stingy. But Paul, he said that as believers, when it comes to giving, meaning almost sowing that, 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 we are to give by equality. And we give by equality, meaning that, look, you can't call your tithe. I know the church people don't like that I teach it this way, but you got to hear me with clarity. You cannot call God's tithe your giving. You can only return the tithe because it's the Lord's. So you can't give somebody something that's there. So now when it comes to giving, all y'all hear me tell you what, So if you if you withheld a tithe, he can't rebuke the devourer for your sake. I'm just going with the book. But 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 more than that. Look at the boy got tight in here again. Ooh, can't give his time. I, I feel a chokehold on me, but I, I also feel an anointing on me. I, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost coming up on me. I'm here to tell you right now that we're about to break some poverty demons up in here. We're going to kill some poverty mindset. We're going to make you understand that, look, you gave little, so you get little. So you're going to always be in your flight because you're measuring it by equality. Equality means what, Pastor Davis? If one person is making $150 a week and another person is making $1,500 a week, there's no way their offerings ought to be the same. Because you got to give by, I'm not talking about the time, I'm talking about your offering because remember, the word offering means I'm offering this to God. Your offering is not church support. Your offering is you telling God, God, this is what I offer you. I'm going to say that again because y'all didn't like that. See, see, most people think their offering is church support. So they have to give him $5. 
But what you're really telling God is, God, you're a $5 God. And I offer you these $5. So do everything you're going to do with these $5, God. Because that's what you're offering him. Because the tithe was his. Or you still do. God. Y'all don't like me right now. You, you see, there's a miserly spirit that, that creeps into churches and have people thinking that because they come from a, a certain socioeconomic group that, that they don't have to bless God the way he said to bless him. But God said, we got to bless him right. Tell him, you got to bless God just right. And, and maybe perhaps he is a $5 God. Perhaps maybe he is. <laughs> maybe he is. Because all you got to do is look at your habitual giving. And it reflects. It will show Third strategy, though, is for you to become a generous giver. <laughs> and thank God we have generous givers in the house. Now, everybody in the house is not a generous giver, so I'm not going to catch all phrase, so let me, teach it, let me teach it to you. Everybody, I'm not talking about everybody, like we got a house full of generous givers. But because the house has some generous givers in it, we are able to be maintained by God. We're kept by the power of God unto salvation. Y'all hold it down. Let me teach you. We're kept by the power of God unto salvation. Are you understanding what I'm saying? In other words, God said, I'll bless people. But I don't expect them people to use all of what I blessed them with for your negligence, your reluctance to sow into my house. God said, he wants you to sow into his house. He wants you to stop looking at what you have, my goodness. And look unto Jesus, my goodness, the author and the finisher of your faith. You know what? He's saying, look, you have to look beyond what's in your account. Oh, y'all getting tied up in here. They never broke people don't like the truth. And it's real tied up in here. It's real tied up in here. It is real tied up here, but I'm talking to generous givers now. So it doesn't matter what the attitude of you broke people are. I'm talking to those of you that know you've been generous toward God. Those, I got some people that, my goodness, that, that did what God told them to do. We've had people that empty out their whole accounts up in this house. And we bless the Lord for it. And it's sustained God. I, I know that ain't going to be you because you're stingy toward God. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm telling you, let the Holy Spirit lead you on what to do. Because generous people release. My goodness. They release. They cast their bread upon water. They have no problem because they know it's coming back. They know it's coming back. They're not holding on to it. But see, most of you all, you're so busy practicing being broke that you can't break free from it. I'm not doing good tonight. I'm not doing good tonight. But I did all that hard work to bless somebody. Because God has said that he's going to give somebody opportunity that was a generous giver. He's going to bless them. He's going to give them not only financial capital, but he's going to give them favor. He's going to give them favor that compasses them like a shield. That's what God's going to do for them. God's going to allow those who have been generous in their giving and their attitude. He said, he's going to allow them. You remember years ago when we were at Oakland Terrace and we were getting ready to purchase what we purchased here. God called Shekinah Glory, Kingdom Ministry at that time. He called them to be a wealth distribution center. Yes, he did. And then God put the money in so that we could distribute it. Well, guess what God is doing now? He said, the first time I did it at large to make the church come to pass. But this time I'm going to bring the individual to pass. And I'm going to give them that that person becomes a wealth distribution center. It's going to come straight out of their hand. That God is going to bless them. That he's going to sustain them. That they will have the resources. They will have enough that they know that they're going to be able to do 
what God called them to do. Right now, I got too many poverty demons in the house, but I'm only talking to the generous givers right now. And whether you want to, five, ten, I need to hear from you right now. I need you to bless the Lord. See, you examining yourself instead of eating the word. I told you to ask the Holy Spirit to give you two or three days, and he'll tell you. Right now, you need to eat what God is saying. Don't, 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 don't sit here and allow condemnation nor conviction to come right now. Record it and put it in your spirit. Put it in your mind. And let God build you up. You see, I got to close my time. It's up. I went past my minutes. I'm sorry. But, but I, I got to close it. And, and I got to give you this because most of you all read this. And you read it in one context because that's the way you were taught it. Instead of reading it, that God is talking to you. You know, Galatians, the third chapter, tells us there's neither male nor female in Christ. And, and yet we try to find the uh, lines of delineation. We try to find points where we can argue about what a female is supposed to do, what a male is supposed to do. We try to find all those places to argue. But when you go into the book and you start looking in the book of Proverbs, and you go to Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 is overtitled a virtuous woman. That's overtitled, am I right? But see, when you know how to apply the scripture, when you learn how to apply the scripture, you take the form that works for you. And you still make it work. You don't just lock it in. But here's where I'm going, because I am, right now, I am talking to some generous givers who happen to be women. Did y'all hear me? Who am I talking to? Generous givers who happen to be women. I'm going to need you to say it. I'm not talking to men populous. I'm not talking to the male populace right now. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to the male populace. You, you're not going to be able to steal this one right now, though you could later on, but you got to get it right with God first. But I'm talking about the generous women, my goodness, who have given to this house, who have given out of everything that they had. And, 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 and see, see, y'all don't know all this stuff like I know, but, but they gave it. They gave to the house. But look what God said. In Proverbs 31, I know a many of y'all who read it, but you didn't lock it down. But I'm going to lock it down for you tonight. In verse 16, Proverbs 31 and 16, it says, She considereth a field and buys it. Did you hear that? Y'all didn't get that. that. That woman who's been generous to God, he said, I'm going to empower them enough that they're going to be able to go look at what they were looking at and be able to make that I don't have that church yet. They're going to be able to make that purchase because of their generosity towards God. They were not stingy towards God. And then he said, and with the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She works and tills. She works hard. Follow-up scriptures tell you. She works hard to develop what she was blessed with. God has given some women, my goodness, in this house, he's blessed them with businesses. And he's given them business opportunities right now. And they've been generous toward him. And he's going to release, I'm telling you, he's going to release a profound blessing that's going to even make y'all miles. Are you hearing? Yeah, 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 y'all going to talk about it. Let me, let me tell you something right now. I got to stop, I got to stop. Billy, Billy, take me, take me to my, bring him home, stuff. Because, thank you, because uh, they, they didn't got faint when I told them, you know, men couldn't get none of this. Then my men started fainting on me. You can't get none, you can't get none. Not this time. How many men go to OBGYN? Thank you. Hello? But all men go to a doctor. So that sometimes just learn how to receive it, receive it that even though I sliced it up, I prefaced it to tell you before I even sliced it that you probably was about to get it sliced off. <laughs> Are you hear me? You cannot be mad at me because let's just tell the truth. If it wasn't for the women sustaining this house, 
I'm talking about God using them to abundantly give. This house would have fainted, fell, and been closed down. But thank God for the generous women. Y'all don't like me now. Y'all don't like me now. It's all right. I'm gonna, I just speak truth. I just... I don't speak for popularity. I speak truth. That's what I'm. I'm anointed to speak truth. But I'm also anointed to take the head off that poverty demon. I want men to find conviction within themselves that they're able to rise up and say, you know what? God, you can count on me. God, you can count on me. I will return your tithe and I will give you a generous offering. Man, you got to step it up. Are, are you hearing me? But see, the reason I'm not afraid to give a word like this, I remember what the psalmist said. For in a time of trouble, he shall hide me. In the secret, my goodness, of his tabernacle, shall he hide me. Glory to God. She calls to heaven, therefore obtain the help of God. When you know God is on your side, you're not worried about if your people come through with money or if they don't come through with money because God is going to come through with money. He'll make an outsider bless the house. My word tonight was to get you to examine yourself. Are you stingy toward God or are you generous toward God? But more than anything, I came with a prophetic win to announce to the people of God who's been generous toward God that God said this is their season. There will be a breaking forth. There will be a coming forth. You will see it. You will see it in their finances. You'll see it in their lifestyle. And tell them it's going to be a quick work. I need a real church. I tell them it's going to be a quick work. I got to get off the air. I got to get off the air. But you know what, what appalls me? What, what really appalls me? It's for you all to call yourself seasoned saints and be so temperamental, so easily swayed by your emotions. I'm sorry, when Billy Davis get up, you're going to get straight truth. Are you hearing me? But when you come out of it, you'll be better because you'll have to deal with your said that because you gave a lot of tithes and you sold every time we had a thing and think that you wasn't stingy toward God because you might have grudgingly gave that and if you grudgingly gave it you were still being stingy toward God even though you gave it Ooh, I'm not teaching well tonight Ooh, woo. I bet you I got a lot of holes in my shirt I bet you when I get home I'm going to have all kind of bullet holes up in my shirt are you hearing but the Lord is on my side? I will not fear what man can do unto me. My job was to get you to recognize where you're at, to get you to posture in faith, to maintain your hope, to put your trust in God. Are you hearing? Trust in the Lord with all, all your heart. All your heart means take away your circumstances. Your circumstances are they're there. Your circumstances are part of reality, but they're not the finality of truth. The truth is the word of God. How many know God can change something like that? Somebody do that. Say just like that. Say it. Say it just like that. Say it again. Just like that. God can change my mind. Come on. And my attitude towards giving, uh, if I'll give it to him. But if you'll live in denial and, 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 and say you're not stingy when you are delusion has overtaken your mind. This is not because the ministry stands in need that I taught what I taught. I taught what I taught tonight because you stand in need. <laughs> huh? You stand in need. And you'll never be able to give what you don't have. So at some point in time, you have to come back to a basic truth. God, this one on me. 
I was stingy towards you. Huh? I didn't walk circumspectly. <laughs> Why should I expect you to redeem the time? Why should I expect you to take me past hardships? But here's the good news. God is rich in mercy. And he gives us grace. And he allows us to be forgiven even when we neglect him. Somebody ought to thank God for forgiveness. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. And that is the way that you want to enter in when you're talking to him later this week about God, have I been stingy towards you? God, am I generous towards you? You can, go, you, can, you can go through the night, you can go through tomorrow, you can go through all the way to Sunday, all the way through the rest of the year and be mad at Pastor David. It's not going to matter to me because the next word God tells me to tell the people, I'm still going to tell them. Are y'all hearing me? Look at somebody, smile at them, tell them whatever you do. Stop being stingy toward God. Tell them you may give money. But do you give time? You may give money and time. But do you give talent? You may give money, time, and talent. But do you get in the word? Stop being stingy towards God. Father God, we thank you for your word that you spoke to your people tonight, God. Grace, mercy, and truth be upon us right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. Thank you for the manifestation of your spirit, God, that it has been given to us, God, that we can profit right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, we thank you for divine healing in our midst right now, God. We thank you for peace, God, that surpasses all understanding, God. We thank you for joy, God, taking over frustrated and emaciated souls, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we thank you for your provision, every hand being extended toward us, God. We thank you for your divine hand of protection, God, being over us in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, for being our garrison, God, in the name of Jesus, God, for fortifying us, God, for protecting us, God, from the evil one, God. We thank you, God, for wisdom, God, that comes from above. God, we thank you for understanding. We thank you for the Holy Spirit of counsel, God, in the name of Jesus. I give you praise honor and glory in jesus mighty name amen 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 grace and peace be multiplied unto you god bless you